Kelly here with Power Studies Inc. and this is the current Q&A. This month on the current Q&A, we're talking about incident energy analysis. And we're gonna ask Bob a question. Bob, I was noticing that in NFPA 70E 2015 standard, it describes incident energy analysis this way. It says, it's a component of an arc flash risk assessment used to predict the incident energy of an arc flash for a specified set of conditions. So how is an incident energy analysis different from an arc flash study? Well, that's a great question. And actually the answer is they are the same. An incident energy analysis and an arc flash study is the same thing. The goal is to uh, calculate the arc flash energy and the arc flash boundary. And then once you know what the arc flash energy is, then you can select the appropriate PPE to protect you from the hazard. Um, there are several ways of doing arc flash uh, studies and also there is a method detailed in NFPA 70E that does a uh, arc flash risk assessment, slightly different from an arc flash study. And so the best way to look at that is this little flow chart that I've prepared. So you want to do an arc flash uh, risk assessment. Well, uh, there's two meth two uh, ways to do it in NFPA 70E and one is to use the NFPA 70E task table method. And they now have a new table in this uh, 2015 version, 130.C15AA, and that's where you look up the task that you're going to be doing, the type of job that you're going to be doing on a piece of electrical equipment, and then you look to see whether or not there's arc flash PPE required. Once you find out that Yes, there is arc flash PPE required. Then you go to what's called the arc flash PPE categories table and you look up the equipment type that you're working on. So the type and piece of equipment you're working on based on um, also voltage as well. And then you look and it'll tell you then what the arc flash PPE category is and what the arc flash boundary is. And this only works though if you uh, adhere to the table limits because at each piece of equipment they'll specify what the maximum short circuit rating is or available fault current and what the maximum tripping time has to be. If you exceed any one of those values, short circuit or tripping time, you can't use this method. The next method, or after you've done this, um, uh, you determine what your arc flash category is, then you go to the uh, arc flash PP matrix table, 130.7C16. There it's going to tell you what, what the uh, arc flash uh, clothing you're going to wear and the minimum arc rating in calories per centimeter squared and any additional PP that you're going to have to wear. The other way to do these uh, arc flash studies and in, uh, incident energy analysis is, is using the IEEE 1584 equations, the Lee equations, or using arc pro uh, to calculate your energy and your arc flash boundary. This method has, n has nothing to do with risk, meaning risk is not a factor in it like this method is. Here we're calculating just the arc, uh, the arc flash energy uh, in calories per centimeter squared and what the arc flash boundary is going to be. And 1584 equations are good for 208 volts up to 15,000 volts. After that you can use the Lee equations uh, and also arc pro is used quite a bit in high voltage utility type work because it's very good for single phase uh, to ground faults. And uh, once you have determined uh, using these three, one of these three methods, the incident energy and the arc flash boundary, then you go to a different PPE matrix table in 70E. This one's in the back in the annex section and you go to table H.3B. There you'll look up uh, what your minimum clothing rating is going to be based on the value you've calculated here. There's three different levels. And then also it'll tell you what additional PPE you have to wear. So that's kind of the, the different methods that are available to us to do this, these arc flash studies and also a risk analysis. Remember this is risk analysis here. These are arc flash studies here. Thank you for explaining that to us, Bob. That's a lot to take in. All right, well, that was this month's current Q&A. Stay tuned for next month.